Okay, so now that you understand notes, the next thing you have to understand are what we call intervals. Intervals are two notes or the distance between two notes. So say for example, you have two pennies here and you have a distance from one penny to the other penny. Uh, if you move it here, now you have a wider distance, right? And a wider distance or a wider interval. You can see here, same thing with notes. You can have a very narrow distance or you can have a wider interval, right? And so depending on how wide it is or whatnot, it's called something different. So our smallest interval, that's called minor second. The next biggest interval from here to here, that's a major second. The next biggest interval from here to here is a minor third, and then you have a major third. Okay, so these are the intervals that we're gonna work with. Minor second, major second, minor third, major third. Notice that a minor third has two notes inside of it, and a major third distance has three notes inside of it. So with that knowledge, we can go play other minor thirds and other major thirds. So over here, that's a major third, right? Because there's three inside of it. Uh, if we go here, that's a major third, because it has those three notes inside of it. Uh, here, that's a major third, because there's these three notes inside of it. But if we played this, that's a minor third, because it has two notes, right? And so is this, that's a minor third. Okay, so now that you understand that these intervals are just distances, right? You can place them anywhere on the keyboard, you know, as long as it's, you know, three notes inside of it, it's a major third, and that can be anywhere on the keyboard. Now I'll show you the rest of the intervals so you understand. So after a major third is a perfect fourth, right? Um, so we have our minor second, our major second, our minor third distance with two inside of it, our major third distance with three inside of it, and now we have a perfect fourth distance with four notes inside of it. So that's our perfect fourth. And then uh, from there, you know, this is called a tritone. And then this is a perfect fifth. So you have your perfect fourth, our perfect fifth with a tritone in the middle, right? So perfect fourth, tritone, perfect fifth. Uh, and then after this weird kind of middle part where you have perfect fourths, not minor or major fourths, you know, a perfect fifth, and you also have this weird one called a tritone, uh, and then we get to our minor sixth. And if you wanted to count it, you could see that it has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven notes inside of it. So a minor six will always have seven notes inside of it. So if we wanted to start, you know, here, you know, and you'd create a minor six, we just count seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then one more. So that's a minor six, okay? But back to our example here, uh, when we're starting on C, so that's minor second, major second, minor third, major third, perfect fourth, tritone, perfect fifth, minor sixth. Now we have our major sixth. And then for sevenths, it's the same thing. Minor seventh, major seventh. And then this last one from C to C, that's called an octave. Okay, so you can see how all those intervals are different distances. And you know, you can play these intervals, you know, different places on the keyboard. Say we wanted to play a perfect fourth starting on A flat. So you find A. A flat is the note below, right? Because flat means below. And now we need a perfect fourth. So a perfect fourth has one, two, three, four notes inside of it. So that would be our perfect fourth. Okay? But that's the concept of intervals. It's just one note to the next note, and it's all different distances. Okay, but that's it for this lecture on intervals, so now you understand uh, what this concept is. And I'll see you in the next lecture.